So this is properties of determinants, and also we're gonna learn about Cramer's rule. We're gonna start off with a theorem. So the theorem's pretty simple. If A and B are both N by Ns, then the determinant of AB is equal to the determinant of A times the determinant of B. You can distribute it basically. Let's look at an example. Yep, they're equal. I'm gonna prove this, that's a cute little proof. We're gonna start off with, we'll start off with a known fact. Let's go ahead and take the determinant of both sides. So from the last theorem, and what's the determinant of the identity? It's one. So we're trying to find out what this is. So let's isolate it. We're allowed to do this because it's a constant. So we're allowed to divide both sides by a constant. You can't divide by a matrix A. Don't ever do that. So those cancel. And there it is. So again, this is the minor, and this is called the cofactor, the whole thing. But what's missing here, this is not the determinant, what's missing here is we're not using the AIJ. Okay, it's just the plus or minus part of it. And then, so the adjoint is we have to find each of these, for every single one of these, we have to find, use this formula, and then we transpose it, and then that's the adjoint of A. Let's do an example. It's a big example. So we have nine components, so we need nine cofactors. C11, this is C11, times the minor. So basically though, they're alternating. So let me just write in all of those, mine, um, signs. So the first one here is positive. You can see it's a square. Our second one, C12, which will be right here. It's minus times the minor. So there's all nine. Let's write that out. And notice how I did them in the same order. Three across. It's just easier. But the adjoint is those cofactors, but the transpose of it. So I'll write the transpose. And now let's go ahead and write it out. That's equal to... So there's our adjunct A. Okay, we're going to multiply now. A, I'm sorry, A times adjoint A. So our A is our adjoint A. And so we have negative 18 along our diagonal. I'm going to factor that out. When we factor 18 out, we're left with the identity matrix. And that's another note. If I take the determinant of A, that is negative 18. Of course, I didn't figure it out, but you can figure it out for practice. So we have a formula here. So A, adjoint A, is equal to the determinant of A. We don't need that I. I mean, you could do some math magic here. I'm gonna divide both sides by determinant of A. So what we have here, I on the right, there's A, times one over the determinant 
of adjoint A. Well, that means we have another formula for the inverse. Again, like if you're trying to program a computer and you need to, the determinant of A, this is probably how you do it. Okay, last topic. So our x is a column vector, and the solution of each of these xi's Okay, pretty much this is how you solve each of them. I'm going to box that. That's the important part. But you can't use Cramer's rule unless you find the determinant of A and it's not equal to zero. Notice in our formula, it's in the denominator. So there's no way it could be zero and for us to use it. So that's how I remember the order of these two. The determinant of A cannot be zero and that's the one on the bottom. Remember, we know there's a, one unique solution if the determinant of A doesn't equal to zero. So this gives us that unique solution. So let's write this as a system. So we need to actually find three determinants. First, to do this Kramer's rule, we need to find the determinant of A. Let's find the determinant of A1. And what we do is we replace the first column with B. The other column stays the same. And the last determinant that I need is the second one. And so this is the second A2. So we replace B in column two. So we have it. It actually divides in there evenly. My X2. Just so need the determinant sign there. Okay, I'm gonna um, do a three by three, but I'm not gonna take the time to calculate all the determinants. You can do that. You can pause and do that for practice. So again, we replace this, this is A1, with the first column. And then this other row stay the same. You find that determinant. So the first column stays the same, two and four. Find that determinant. Get some practice here if you actually work these out. So that B goes A1, first column, A2 goes in the second column, A3, third column, same B. And then you find that determinant, and then our solutions are, again, the determinant of A goes on the bottom. It cannot be zero. And those are the solutions. Okay, have a good day.